we are all apprentices in a craft where no one ever becomes a master. Ernest Hemingway. Let's go. It is Drew with Trust the Process. So, I chose that quote from Ernest Hemingway for a couple of reasons. One, I literally just ran across this quote. But I love anything that can be kind of seen on multiple levels, right? Whether it's a picture, a painting, a quote, whatever it is, if you can see it or feel it on multiple levels, multiple interpretations, the way that people can take things. And I love this particular quote. I think so many times there are people in this world that don't start something, right? They don't attack something because they're not there yet. They're not perfect and they feel as though you've got to be perfect in order to go for it, right? I've seen people not apply for jobs because they felt like they weren't qualified, they weren't ready. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, honestly, what's the worst that's gonna happen is somebody's gonna tell you no. I'm being a hypocrite because I've done that myself. But there's so many things in this world that if, if you sit around and you wait for the right time, if you wait till you're perfect, you're gonna be sitting around waiting forever. And I just, when I, when I read that quote, I thought about it in, in a, in, to be real, I, I thought about it in so many different ways. I actually started thinking about the last video I made and, and how I think it's good to have people around that can tell you the truth, that can say certain things to you, but I struggle with that because I, I don't feel like I'm a finished product, right? I feel like I'm a work in progress and who am I to go around telling somebody else this is what they need to improve on or this is this is their flaws. I don't mind telling people what they can improve on and what they can do to become better. But when you, whenever I, right, if I were to, to come at somebody and say, this is where you're messing up, this is what you're doing wrong, I feel like I'm a hypocrite because Ain't nobody out here, <laughs> ain't nobody out here that's doing everything perfect. And, you know, somebody, somebody commented on my last video and asked me if I could make a video talking about kind of like bullying, right? And there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can be bullied in life. I remember when I was a kid, I remember somebody saying, Sticks and stones will break your bones, but words can never hurt me. Well, I think once you become an adult, you realize that's about the biggest BS lie I've ever been told. Because words can hurt. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because I talked in that last video, okay? I talked about how I needed to hear that person tell me that I was fat, that I needed to hear that because that motivated me to get going, right? But it's also why I'm still super self-conscious and I worry about how other people perceive me. And I worry, I actually care like way too much whether or not I gain a few pounds or not. And that's ridiculous. It shouldn't even matter. It really shouldn't. If I'm good, if I'm happy, then I should be good, right? I shouldn't even worry about what anybody else thinks. So those words did hurt. I remember when I was a kid, I remember I was probably about seven or eight years old. And I remember being bullied at the time. It's funny how certain things stick out in your memory, right? Like you, you wish you could remember all the good things and not remember bad things, but, but I remember these kids at, at this little daycare center that I used to go to, I remember them telling me that I smiled too much. Like, why are you always smiling? Because it was for some reason, I don't know what it was, but when I was a kid, like I just always had this like natural smile on my face. And they would, I mean, they would just get on me just constantly. I remember I would sit on this swing out there and I would I would wait for for my mom to pick me up in the afternoon 
And that was like the favorite, it was my favorite part of the day was when my mom would come pick me up. Like I just loved it. And I remember they'd come over to me and they would tell me, oh, your mom's here, your mom's here. And I'd get up and I'd go run. And they was just trying to get their spot on the swing. And those two things impacted me quite a bit. In the, in the moment, it impacted me because I was upset. Like, how could this person say something or do something to me with the intent to, to just manipulate me or hurt me? And then for a long time, and even to this day, I struggle with smiling in photographs. My smile, I'm very self-conscious about my smile and I hate that because a smile can completely change somebody's life. Like if you ever been out somewhere and you seen somebody smile and it just was contagious, they weren't even smiling at you, but you just saw their smile. There's somebody in my life now that, that, that when I see this person smile, it's pure magic. And it's not just me. I've seen the effect that this person has on other people when they smile, and it is just absolutely unbelievable. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. So when it comes to bullying, right, it's something that I have kind of a personal kind of feel on, right? I have, I have a lot of passion behind it because it hurts. But what I would tell anybody who's in this situation now, looking back, because bullies come in all shapes, sizes, forms. <laughs> Bullying is not just, oh, making fun of somebody because they have acne or they have an ugly sweater because their parents couldn't afford to buy them something nice. It, bullying comes in a lot of different ways. But ultimately, what it is, is somebody who is not happy and they're trying to knock you down. Because negative can't be around positive. It just doesn't work. So they're either going to have to conform and become positive or they're going to have to make you negative. And when people are in relationships where one person is constantly negative, they, they don't want the other person to be that positive light. They don't want them to shine because they don't feel right. Because they're not happy themselves. I spent a lot of time, a long time in my life in that scenario and and it, and and ultimately that's what it is. And so if you understand that when somebody is bullying you that that's a reflection of themselves, that's that's their issue and that they're not happy and they're trying to bring you down, then you'll understand it's nothing personal. They're just a little jealous. They wish they were that happy. And because they're not, they want to bring you down to their level. I'd be a hypocrite if I went any further on the bullying topic and, and really gave some, some super big advice because it's not easy. When you're in that moment, it's a struggle. And anybody in this world who's ever been bullied, I don't care if it was when you were five or 50, it's no fun. But just try to remember that aspect, I guess, is what I would say. Try to remember that, that the person trying to bring you down, they're bringing you down because they're not happy. They're the one. They're the one that has the issue. All right? So keep your head up, right? Keep your chin up so that crown don't slip. And uh, we'll keep grinding. We'll keep moving forward. And we'll always trust the process. I will talk to you all later. I am out.